Okay. So, hi everybody. Starting again. My microphone was on mute. It's the classic mistake. Okay. It happens to everyone. I'm Desiree Falzon. And I'm Victor Falzon. And we're both uh, teachers on the Dinya Wahda program, which is Bird Life Maltas, together with the Education Directorate. Uh, today we have a new subject for you, which is habitats, places for nature. We managed to answer all last time's questions. How do you do that? During the program, if you want to ask us anything, you have a Q&A at the side, and at the bottom of that, you have a space to type in your questions. We try to answer everything during the program. If we don't, we'll answer them at the beginning of the next live event. Mm -hmm. There are uh, no questions from last week, oh, and we managed to answer them all. <laughs> good, so time to start. Give us a moment to switch screen. You'll see a blank. You'll see a live event has paused. Coming in a moment. Right, our mystery objects. It's something in nature. It's something that we've taken a small bit of, and it's something you probably have seen. Maybe you haven't noticed it. It's something alive, and it's quite a strange thing. So write your replies, send them to us. We're going to give you some time now. You won't see your replies. Of course, we're not going to publish them yet. We're not going to make them public. We'll leave them to the end of the program and tell you how you've done. I wonder if we've confused you with this time. It's maybe the hardest one, but maybe not. Mm. OK. They look like pasty. They look like pastries. Oh, nice. With orange. No, apricots. Apricot jam. Yes, exactly. Oh, nice. I can taste uh -huh. that. But mm. don't try to taste that one because mm, I know what that is. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't want to taste this one. Good. I was just get, about to get hungry. That thought stopped that. OK, so I think we've given you enough time to think. On with the show. Places for nature. Habitats are places where plants and animals live, and they depend on their habitats. Oh, aha, look at these. What on earth are those? Those are called oven worms. <laughs> They're not real. I hope so. What, do they live in ovens? Well, yes, actually. You see, this was a little quiz we gave our club, Huttaf, that's BirdLife Young Members, a competition to draw an animal and tell us what habitat it lives in and why it looks like what it looks like. And uh, these very creative teams were our, this very creative team was our winner because they came up with these oven worms, which live, you guessed, in an oven. Mm. Now, an oven- <laughs> Not a very pleasant place to live. Unless you're an oven worm. An oven worm has a silver, a silvery white outside so that it reflects heat so that they don't burn. It also has a sucker-like mouth so that it can suck into food you've prepared there. So do you ever find bits missing? Hmm. Hmm. I, I think, think I once tasted an oven worm. Oh, maybe no. It was, maybe it was in the, <laughs> in the pastry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is that an animal depends on its habitat. So if you have a habitat like this, it makes sense to look like an oven worm. And all animals and plants must look and behave depending on their habitats. For example, this is a real animal. It's a drawing, of course, but it's a drawing of a real animal. There's the it's polar not a bear. Poodle, is it? No, poodle, I ask you. It's a polar bear. And the polar bear, look, oh, oh, oh. Did, did you do this? I think I must have mixed up the habitats. You there, certainly did. It doesn't look like it's the right place for a polar bear to live, is it? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Ah, that makes more sense. A it was a trick. It was a trick. <laughs> it was a trick to tell us about habitats, in fact, because polar bears need to be white because they are predators and they don't want their animal prey to see them coming. And they also need to have a very thick coat because it's cold. Now, here's another habitat. Totally opposite. It's uh, hot and dry. So not very good for a big animal like a polar bear who'd need a lot of water. Mm. So what living thing could live there? How do you imagine it would be? Something... Mm, I know, something that can store water, maybe? Exactly. I was thinking of a camel, though. <laughs> uh, well, a camel can store water. But this yes. is just as good. Yes. It's a living thing as well, and they it's have to cactus. live, uh, and yes. they have to adapt also. They have to be good for their habitat. Yes. 
And they, these, mm -hmm. they're good, yeah, because they can live in a desert. How can they? How can they do that? Because instead of having a lot of leaves which waste a lot of water when you can't waste it, they have a nice big thick trunk and stalk like that, which holds every drop of water that they find. Mm, so when whenever it rains in the desert, which is rare, they store all that water in it. Exactly. And then they use, use it, it little during by little. the years when it's very dry. Without wasting it. That's now. Right. Malta is small, very small, and it's an island, but still we have a lot of habitats. Today we take a look at some of them. Our first one is farmland, and more than half our islands are actually covered in farmland. These are farms, fields, where people grow crops. Our next largest habitat is built up. It's the places where we live, where we have our restaurants, petrol stations, roads built up. And it's a very big part of Malta. If we're not careful, we'll lose all our nature. Another habitat, which we have quite a bit of, although not where it's built up and not where there are farms, is rocky land. More about this later. Very, very little of this now, woodland. And I'm not talking about groups of 10, 15 or even 20 trees because you find these here and there. But I'm talking about really big places, woodlands, and we have very, very, very little of this in Almost our islands. Almost nothing there. <laughs> Almost nothing, which is sad. Mm. Woodland is a great habitat for nature. Um, also, another habitat which I have very little of are wetlands. We don't have rivers in water that keep water the year round. But we do have some places that remain wet. Cliffs. Malta is an island, so it has a lot of coastline. Now in the south, the coastline is very high and this makes cliffs. And of course, because we're an island, we have the sea. We forget to think about the sea as a habitat, but it's the one where we have most of Let's start with farmlands. When you see, it's, this is a lovely photo from the air, and you can see all these fields, a nice flat area with hundreds of fields over here. But it's not just one big chunk of soil, is it? There's a lot of small fields because these belong to different people. Now, the cool thing about that is that between the fields, marking where one person's field starts and the next one finishes or starts, there are rubble walls and rubble walls are great habitats for animals. For example, hedgehogs stay in rubble walls. They sleep there during the day and at night they come out and have a crunchy meal of snails or beetles or wood lice, which they find in the soil. Or popcorn. Oh, don't be silly. OK, sorry. You keep quiet. The hedgehogs find rubble walls as perfect places, but they're even more perfect when farmers don't use pesticides or so much because pesticides gather in the snails that they eat and then they make hedgehogs sick, especially young ones. We need to use less pesticides and have more nature. Now, sometimes farmers let a field rest in between planting it with things that we need to eat it's good that the soil rests and when the soil rests, a lot of lovely wildflowers grow. And this is a fantastic habitat for insects, pollinators and of course, things that eat insects. So these weren't planted by the by the farmer, were they? They grow on their they own. They just grow wild. on their own. And what's more, that's why they're called wildflowers. Yes. And you know what? Not all wildflowers grow everywhere because you won't find poppies, for example, in a woodland. You will find them in places where farms are resting. And all these other flowers, beautiful, aren't they? I like growing wildflowers in my garden as well. I collect seeds from the wild. And of course, where you have flowers, you have insects, and then you have the animals that eat insects, like this bird that comes on migration. It's called a yellow wagtail. Here's another yellow wagtail. And he's caught an insect, looks like a spider there, doesn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> I saw it close up before. Yes, it's definitely a spider, yes. which is another predator of insects. Huh? There you go. So this predator has caught another predator. 
and so on ad infinitum. That's a lot of uh, food chains going on in our fields if we don't use too much pesticide. Yes, pesticides are poison. Eh? They kill the plants, they kill insects. Yes. Absolutely. You have to be very, very careful. Farmers have to be very careful what very pesticide careful. they use. They're not very good for us either. Mm. And something that we ignore, we don't think about a lot, do we? Soil itself. You can see this cutaway shows you how the soil is. The one on the right has a layer of, of grass at the top, then there's a layer of soil, and then there will be the rock. So soil isn't very deep, but it's very, very, very important. The things that live in soil, there are more animals than, than in the rest of any other habitat in the world, and they are extremely important because without them, we wouldn't have nutrients. Take, for example, this earthworm. Looks a bit like a rope. It's a worm. And it happened to pop out, in fact, very briefly before it squirmed its way back down. And cool thing is that soil loves earthworms, although it doesn't tell us, but we know that because this is what earthworms do. See what it's doing there? Earthworms grab leaves and other fallen bits of wood, parts of plants, and take them down into canals that it makes itself. So they pick them from the surface of the soil mm -hmm. and drag them down into the tunnel, exactly. into their tunnels, the holes that they make. Exactly. Wow. And when they are finished from the leaf, the soil becomes richer. So without them, the soil would not have any recycling material, recycled material inside it. It wouldn't have any good stuff to feed plants. And oh no, what's he doing here? <laughs> uh, he thought uh, since it's the shape of an earth, where more or less it's long, you know, and thin, it might like to live there for a while, take oh, a break you, from the oven, you know. You'll die in seconds because you are not adapted to this habitat. Okay. It's go away, go away, go, 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 go. Move out. Sorry. There. Now, moving on to our next habitat, rocky land. You can see why we call it rocky land, can't you? because the rock is at the surface. There is very little soil and it's in pockets in between those exposed rocks. Now, I don't know whether you've noticed, but I can see that the rocky land changes a lot. Sometimes it's all green and sometimes there are colors and, and uh, sometimes there are reddish bits. Do you know why that is? Because the plants, in rocky land have to face a lot of sun and a lot of cold and very little water. So they have to be able to change very easily with the seasons. And that's what you see over here. You see on the right, it must be winter. But then where there's the word rocky land, that's spring. You have a sudden, short, almost violent season of flowers. And then under that, it's definitely summer. In the middle, we're somewhere in between. But even though plants have a hard time living in rocky land, it's also called garig, by the way. There are a lot, hundreds wow. of wildflowers. They're great, aren't they? The one on the left is actually an orchid. Yes, and we have lots of orchids here. We have yeah. over 30 species, and they, all of them grow in, in, this, in this kind of habitat. In the rock, in rocky land. In rocky land. So don't think you can just mm. chuck rocks around because it's a very important habitat. It's one of our most beautiful habitats, and there's a lot of life going on there. Hello. This is not a flower. Absolutely not. But of course, there's always food chains if a health, if a habitat is healthy. This is a stone chat, and it's called chat because that's the sound it makes. It keeps going like that, but you don't hear it at this time of year. No, it only stays here in winter. It's a, it stays They're here in winter. By now. They've all migrated away. But the stone jet likes the garig because it eats insects. And if you just step up onto a rock or onto the tip of a branch, dried branch, dried flower, or the tip of a bush, you can see a lot around you because all the plants are very low. So this is not a robin. No, it's it robins have orange, not rustish uh, breasts. And they don't have a black head either. Or the white stripe <laughs> there. No, it's quite different from a robin. Mm -hmm. Although both both uh, birds eat insects. 
Oh, yes. They have the same shape of a... Ooh, ooh, what's that? Ooh. That's called a cat snake. Why does it eat cats? And it has... I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> it has nothing to do with eating cats. Look at its eye. Can you see that? Mm, that's pupil. It's narrow. Yes. It's, like the, it's like the eye of a cat. Exactly. Yes, and that's why it's called a cat snake. That slit pupil, not round like ours. This cat snake likes the garig, likes the rocky land, because it can slither under a rock, stay asleep by day and avoid the heat and come out at night and find beetles and other animals that come out at night. And here are some of the animals that it might eat, but these are here during the day. Where you have flowers, of course, you're going to have butterflies, like this wonderful little uh, clouded yellow, it's called. And on the right is an animal picture that would actually be a great picture for Mother's Day. Yes. What's the brown stuff on its back? That's not its color, is it? Nope. Those are babies. Ooh, those and are babies. I was really lucky to find so one. So that's their mother. That's where it was the students I was with who found it. Yeah, and I couldn't called, believe that's it. That's called a wolf spider. So you might imagine how 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 fierce it would be. And yet, and look, yet, look at look that. Look what a gentle mother gentle. carrying all her babies on her back. And why does it do that? Because this is rocky land. You don't have good places to hide. It's everything is very shallow. The pockets are shallow. So best place when they're very young, keep them with you. Now, on to another habitat built up. We all know what this is. There's no one who hasn't seen this and we've got quite a lot of it. We have to be careful not to make it too much more because we push nature out. But one animal that is very good at adapting, at finding spaces wherever it can, is, did you get it? We showed him last week, is our Spanish sparrow. And there it is making a nest in a ventilator, those little squares that let in air in our rooms from the outside. But even in built up places, there are gardens. This one, for example, is a garden in a school. It's at Imrihel, Birgikara. Do you have a garden? Sadly, gardens are getting less and less because people are building over or making pools and decks and, well, habitats are going. But you can do one at the school, can't you? This one, for example, this is the bird we had in the caption quiz last week. Do you remember? There is the female Sardinian warbler on the right and the male Sardinian warbler on the left. And both of them are in a thick shrub, in a bush. And it's easy to have bushes around our homes. Just think about adding nature and you can put a bush. They love our gardens. And here are animals that sardinium warblers might eat if they're not too big. Um, they are carnivores themselves. They are predators themselves, beautiful male lizards. Um, some studies have shown that lizards aren't found in the countryside much anymore. They are found more. We find more lizards near our buildings and in our gardens. So that's another reason to make sure that we have gardens and we keep gardens if we have them. And what do lizards eat? They eat ants. So a good, a good animal to encourage if you don't want ants around. Mind you, I love ants. Look how this, the one on the right is carrying it. It's almost like a, like a beard carrying it up from its face. Mm, what a large seed that is. No, it's it could a very be heavier large. than the ant itself. So that's why, why ants are really, really strong animals, even if they're small. And, and the one on the small. left, and it looks like it's going to fly. It is. In fact, it's a male. And there's one time of the year when there are males and they have wings and they fly and they mate with the queen. But that's for another subject. Here we have a very interesting animal. Actually, it's the young of an animal. It's called an ant lion. And here you see it reversing and building its burrow. It looks a bit like a Michael Jackson walk, doesn't it? You can imagine the music. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay, okay, <laughs> got right, it. Sorry. So it's building a funnel. Why? Because it stays hidden in the funnel and it will throw soil at a passing ant. It will fall down and that's what and that's it's, the end of the, the ant. end of its dinner. OK, we all eat and so do animals. Wetlands. These are the ones we have very, very little of. As you know, it doesn't rain much in Malta. Well, yesterday was fantastic, in fact. And it's, um, we don't have rivers. 
But we do have a couple of places where there is water all the year round. This is a BirdLife Malta nature reserve. It's at Adira. And there are uh, about three others in our islands like this, large and with water in it. This water is very special because it comes from the sea and it also comes from the rain. So it's a mix. It's a, a mix of, it's brine, we call it brine. And when you have special water like that, you have special animals in it and you have special predators of those animals or vegetarians, if you like. The ones in the middle, for example, are ducks. And they swim and they poke their heads down and they eat algae, plants growing in the water. But the ones at the sides are walking on the left. They have long legs and they can spot fish. We have the national fish over there, the killifish. And on the right, we have fishers like the kingfisher and the cormorant. So many different types in such a small place. We have other wet places, but these change with the season. This would dry up. This is, I think this is Chadwick Lakes, so I'm not sure. I think yes, it, is. it looks like Chadwick okay. Lakes. So, you know, if you've been to Chadwick Lakes, you know that it dries up. After yesterday, it will be pretty full good. again. And um, animals who live in places like this have to have a very fast life cycle. Like, for example, these dragonflies. The one in the middle top is a damselfly. But all of them lay eggs in water. The eggs hatch into the little animal you see at the bottom left. It doesn't have wings because it doesn't need them. It's not flying and it's a predator and it will catch things like mosquito young. And when it's ready to have wings and fly out, it will climb up the wall. It will split its skin and come out as a winged dragonfly. This one hasn't quite dried up yet, but soon it will be an adult dragonfly. And this has to happen pretty fast in places like Chadwick Lakes or where you have rivers because it will dry out when the rain hasn't come down for quite a while. And of course, our wonderful painted frog. Really, really. That's right, a really. It's surrounded by duckweed. In fact, it's floating on duckweed, which is a plant that grows where you have um, ponds. And um, this one's life cycle also has to be pretty fast because the tadpoles will grow in the water and when the water has dried up, they have to change into frogs. This one, in fact, is a young frog which has recently changed from tadpole. A new habitat called cliffs. We have this all along our south side. And here we see two photos because in Maltese we have actually different names for these two types. On the left we have Erdum, which are cliffs which have a lot of crumbling bits and boulders and big stones. And we have Sis, which on the right is a straight cliff face. Different habitats equals different animals. On cliffs, you will always have plants in each habitat because plants are at the beginning of the food chain. These plants in particular need to be very, very strong because they face sea spray, they face heat, they face cold and wind. And on the left, we have our national plants. Did you recognize it? Mm -hmm. It's the Maltese rock centauri. With nettle bahar. With nettle bahar. In the middle there is capara, the caper plant, and we have two other plants that are really strong and can live on the cliff face. And of course, from the national plant, we go to our national birds, the blue rock thrush. You see there is rock in the name again. The blue rock thrush, this is a male bird. It's blue, il meril and it loves living at cliff edges. It's a safe place for it. If you're lucky and you go to cliff faces, you will hear its beautiful warbling call. It's a beautiful song. We showed you this lovely shear water last week when we talked about nests. The shear water makes its nest right inside cracks and crevices because it doesn't have to build anything. It's safe. Predators can't get at it. This one, in fact, is a mother there and it's it's recently laid a tech egg that will hatch round about this time what are me may yes uh, the young have hatched at this time and here's another uh, bird that lives in a, a similar place a place like the other one 
because it, as you can see, it doesn't have strong legs, but it's always out at sea, so it has very strong uh, wings. In Maltese, we call it Kanjuta Filfla. It's a storm petrel. It lives its life at sea and it only comes in to, to make nests called Kanjuta Filfla because that's where it nests. Perfect rocky scape for it to have its egg. Now, on to a beautiful habitat which is very rare in our islands. We should be planting more and more woodlands because we really need the oxygen that it gives off and the clean air. This is a young woodland that BirdLife made in the year 2000. These trees are today, they're 20 years old. Over here, they were about 15 in the photo. They've grown since then. They've grown, yes. We have some very old woodlands and very old trees, like the one on the left, which is called an oak tree. Most of our trees do not drop their leaves in winter, but the one on the right, which is a poplar, does. And where there are trees, there are mushrooms, fungi. And we have very many types of fungi. And on the left, there, there are shelf, that's a shelf or a bracket fungus. In the middle is the umbrella shape that we know. And on the right is a cup fungus. There are so many types. I'm sure I haven't seen half of them yet. And they all and need- That's a very tiny thing, right? Oh yes, it's very small. It's as small as one cent. Something mm. like that one. So I can't have a cup of milk in there. You, you wouldn't drink. either, would you? <laughs> and now in woodlands, because it's nice and shady, we also find mammals. And both these mammals are carnivores, predators. The tiny one on the left is not a mouse, it's a shrew. It's got a very long nose and it eats a lot. It's very, very active, but it's very hard to see. It's very shy. It will eat wood lice and, uh, and, and centipedes and things like that. And on the right, slightly bigger, but uh, the size of a kitten perhaps, is the weasel. Also an animal that eats a lot, is very fast, and uh, it can catch its prey very easily. Fantastic for woodlands because they're quiet, shy animals, and you can hide away in woodlands. And, and uh, woodlands, of course, are fantastic places for birds. We have some of our largest and our smallest bird here. Top left, can you see the tiny bird with the beautiful golden do drop on the left? Isn't it cute? Yes, it's like a mouse. <laughs> yes, it's a little mousy face. Um, it's called a gold crest. Tiny, weighs five grams. And it comes during migration. And it, by this time of the year, they have left. And then we also get eagles and other birds of prey. And we get so many types of different birds in woodlands, perhaps the habitat that gets most birds, I think, variety of birds, but I'm not sure about that. The flycatcher and the golden oriole, I think it's trying to look like a peach. Beautiful birds. Yes. And on to the habitat which we have most of, the sea. And here's the plant that is the base of all food chains in the sea. This plant is called Neptune grass and it's very, very important. You will only find it in the Mediterranean, in fact. Why is it important? Because animals can hide in it. So many, many, many fish have their young inside the Neptune grass. So the predators won't find them. Also, grass has roots, right? and the roots keep the sand and the sandy bottom in place. Extremely important. You may be bothered by the algae strips that come on your leg in summer, but next this summer, when, when they do that, remember, this is called Neptune grass, and it's really important for the animals that live in the sea. I wonder uh, what animals live in it. Maybe oh like this no, one. <laughs> where did he come from? Yeah, he's trying to get a break from the oven, you know, nice cool water and maybe hide among those uh, uh, those leaves. Yes, you think hide. You can get camouflaged around those leaves. Just because it's long and narrow, it definitely won't get colorful. Oh, well, I get tried. out of it, get out of it. Ah, there. No, that's real camouflage. That's yeah. camouflage. So on the right, we have an octopus and on the left too. These are two types of octopus. We were really lucky to see the one on the left, only seen it once. As you know, the octopus blends in beautifully with its habitat. All those little bumps on its skin can actually be made flat when it wants to, if it's on a flat bottom. Crabs and 
barnacles, top left, and even shrimps, all crunchy kind of animals. The animal in the middle is a crab that has found an empty snail shell. Don't take them out of the water. They need to breathe in the water. And at the bottom, oh, look what there is at the bottom here. Is that a, is that, is that a bunch of algae there? Um, actually, I can see a claw, though. That's I it. There's that a crab hiding there. Hmm. And so you... what's happened over there? It's just all those plants growing on its back. Exactly. That's what it does. It grabs plants and it puts them, it grabs algae and it puts them on its shell. So it plants them on itself. It actually plants them on itself. Why does it itself. do that? Well, did you see it immediately? Mm, yes. In fact, when we took that picture, uh -huh. we only noticed that it was there because it moves. And you don't usually find plants moving around exactly. on the ground. Exactly. It was really on the, funny. On the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Looks like a very bad hair day. Yeah, it needs to go to visit the hairdresser. Well, yeah. now they're open. So. so it can go, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it will probably remain safe and keep its algae. What do we have here? We have some more sea life. Let's take a look. There's a beautiful moray eel. And look how it keeps to narrow spaces. It's hunting. These parrotfish scrape off algae. You can see the mouth, that bit like a parrot beak. And here's a bearded fireworm. Don't touch these. They're also carnivores. They eat meat. Oh, a beautiful bull ray gliding across the bottom there. So many different animals and so beautiful, all of them. Those are just a few of the habitats, of course. There are also valleys and steppe and caves. We haven't been there and there are so many more, but know that we do have a lot of life in Malta. Here's all the wonderful people who allowed us to use their photos. We're thanking them all and also thanking Steff from the office for her support. Now to our mystery objects. What did you find, Vic? Oh, well, um, I think the, almost the very first one hit it spot on. Wow. But we've had other, other um, interesting, answers. Interesting, interesting answers. There were people who said corals, others said barnacles, others said fungus, that's maybe half right there. Mm -hmm. Others said jellyfish, plankton, octopus, like things in the water. They thought it was something from, most of them thought it was something that lives in the <laughs> water. One said mushrooms and one actually gave us the scientific name Ooh, of a fungus though, Kalimania granulata. I actually had wow. to look it up. It looks a bit like it, but almost. Wow. So, well what's done. the answer? Ta -da. And it's a lichen. And the first person who gave us that answer was actually four kids here Annalise, Owen, Ethan, and Alessandro. Well all done. In one, all in one uh, ah, message. The group. Well yeah. done, kids. That is a lichen. Yes. Strange and very amazing creatures. Uh, I don't know whether creatures is the right word, but it's definitely not a plant. It's actually a mix of a fungus and an alga working together in this amazing living thing. You find them on rocks, living in the heat, living in the cold, and it's amazing how they survive. So next time you see a rock with lichens on it, don't ignore them. Take a close look, take a lens and look inside. Those, those, those things you thought were orange pasty <laughs> are actually the, the seeds called spores. Our caption from last time, we had fantastic answers. We loved them, we laughed, and we noticed how you are thinking of humans when you do this. So there we have a female on the left and a male thinking on the right. And in fact, we're gonna get three answers we liked, although there were more. This one said, crumbs again, I want a juicy berry. And he said, Hoof, she makes life so difficult for me. <laughs> I love this. And that was Kate Harmsworth, who goes to St. Dorothy's Junior School at Zebuch. And then we also had, eat your food. Oh no, she's grumbling again. Why is it always men who tell women they're grumbling? Well, he's not telling her, actually, he's thinking it. He's thinking it, he but wouldn't dare, right? He wouldn't dare. And don't you dare. <laughs> and that was sent to us by Matthias Ajus, who goes to Stella Maris College in Zira. A third one we really liked was, come on, let's go to take care of the chicks. Oops, I made a spelling mistake there. And he said, oh no, let me pretend I'm not hearing her. <laughs> he doesn't want responsibility. He doesn't want to take care of anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this one was sent to us by Julia Saliba, who goes to Sacred Heart Senior School. Right, we like the answers so much that this time we're going to get 
your answers and from next wow. time you're going to get the, the caption that we really like most in Il Huttafa. Il Huttafa is our young members magazine. Um, all under 16s can receive this. If you become a member, it's only 10 euro for a whole year. You get six of these in a year and you it's more of what we're doing here. It's Maltese nature, full of colors, full of information. Just go into the BirdLife website if you want to become one of our members and uh, find the membership page. So it's birdlifemalta.org. This week's caption. Here we have a fence post that is covered in tiny snails and also two or three larger ones. They're not babies. They are different types of snails, different species they are called. What do you think the larger one is saying? Send us your answers on this link, which we will put on Microsoft Teams, and you'll have a form with the photo and you can type in what you think. Do send them in. We love reading them. I remind you that our, uh, our email address is dinyawahda at birdlifemalta.org and that we have a Facebook page where you can uh, join and find things, fun things to do with your family. So we're at the end there and we'll just come back in a moment. And that's us again. Yeah, I had quite a busy time answering questions on the question and answers, lots of questions. I hope I managed to answer them all or most of them. If we find any that we haven't uh, answered, of course, we'll give you the answer um, uh, next week in next week's um, program. Or if you want to ask us anything and uh, or give us a topic, we would love uh, to hear about it. OK, so that's the end of our program for today. On behalf of BirdLife, thank you and bye bye. Bye.